This episode is sponsored by The Northman and BetterHelp. The Scarlet Witch, Marvel's Crimson Queen of Chaos. Zatanna, DC's magnificent mistress of magic. There are those who wield the mystic arts like gods to reshape creation to their whims. And there are those who just like to put on a hell of a show. Either way, don't mess with them if you know what's good for you. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Though we may drift day by day in a world seemingly concrete and eternal, the fabric of reality is in fact more delicate than we might dare to wonder. Imagine every single iota of it, every star, galaxy, universe, all within the grasp of a single mortal woman to control at her whim. Imagine the danger we're all in if you piss her off. We don't have to because her name is Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch. As a kid, she and her brother Pietro were poor Romani, who were lucky enough to be turned into super-powered freaks by the High Evolutionary. Unable to control her apparently new magical abilities, it wasn't long before Wanda lost control and was branded a witch. Until who would show up but the mutant master of magnetism himself, Magneto! Definitely giving off some big dad energy there. So to return Magneto's kindness, she and Pietro joined his Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Great name there, Magneto, solid branding. And it wasn't long before she traded her supervillain creds for a membership with the Avengers, which might have been a bit too much for poor Wanda because she definitely drew the superpower short stick. By waving her hands, Wanda could create small random events known as hexes, subtly altering the probability of any event happening. That's a cool way of saying she could do like one magic-y thing per fight and then be totally useless. An energy blast here, some telekinesis there, a force field if she's feeling frisky, not exactly the same oomph as say the God of Thunder or the Jolly Green World Breaker. But something strange was happening. Over time, her hexes increased in breadth and power, as if there was more to Wanda's powers than met the eye. She learned to slow and stop time, drain and absorb energy, duplicate herself and others, teleport to different dimensions, and even strip others of their powers entirely. It was almost as if there was more to Wanda than just being some random science experiment. Let's ask our resident expert on the deepest trenches of character history. Jocelyn, if you will. In reality, Wanda's powers weren't entirely the result of the High Evolutionary, nor was she the mutant daughter of Magneto, as he's claimed. Her powers weren't just some simple hexes. She might as well have been a god. Until now, she had merely been dipping her toes into the vast ocean known as Chaos Magic. Though her powers may have seemed to be the byproduct of science, they were in reality the gift of the Lovecraftian elder god Cthon, who attempted to turn Wanda into his future vessel. Reminds me of my summers by the sea with old Uncle Yogg-Sothoth. In time, Wanda discovered she could alter the probability of anything she could think of, turning a mathematical impossibility into an absolute certainty, and vice versa. Wanda's powers kept growing and growing, turning her into a being strong enough to rival even the mightiest of gods. Like, literally, Wanda's chaos magic is counterpart to the Phoenix Force, the embodiment of cosmic order. You know, that fiery space chicken that can destroy the universe? <laughs> Wanda fought it, and even briefly erased it from existence. At her height, the Scarlet Witch achieved total control over energy, the weather, the elements, your mind, your body, your soul, all of time, all of matter, and all of reality. She can wipe you from existence with a thought and rend the very fabric of the universe as though it were tissue paper. She isn't even limited to chaos magic either. They might not have been what made her a god, but the High Evolutionary's experiments did make her more receptive to channeling magical energy. Oh, maybe that's why Mama Boomstick always warned me about redheads. She's so receptive, in fact, that Wanda is the lone nexus being of the 616 reality, a focal point for the universe's magical energies, and one that belongs equally to all other timelines. It's no wonder she was considered a candidate for Sorcerer Supreme. I mean, shit, why wasn't she? She might as well be a walking, talking infinity gauntlet. Well, she may have the power of a god, but she's still stuck with a human's body that can be overpowered by physically stronger foes. Though, she also survived being shot with a black matter bullet capable of, and I quote, world-shattering energy. So there's that. 
She does technically need to be able to think of a spell in order to get it to happen, so she could theoretically be blitzed, but she's also blocked Thor's galaxy crossing hammer, kept up with dudes like X-Man who can fight within plank time, and even amp her own speed beyond the concept of speed herself. Despite being far and away the mightiest among Earth's mightiest heroes, Wanda resented the pressure of her incredible power. She actually wanted a quiet life as a wife and a mother. But because no one in comics is allowed to have a happily ever after, that life was taken from her by literal Satan. Not the last time he'd do this too. Wanda snapped and she took the multiverse with her. By tapping into an inconceivable and unknowable pool of energy known as the life force, Wanda rewrote all of reality creating a new universe where life was just how she wanted it. No matter whose life she had to change, in this House of M, she had her family back, but at the cost of her sanity. And it wasn't long before it all came crashing down around her. Once her family and friends discovered the lie of their new lives and turned against her, she uttered three fateful words and erased nearly all of mutant kind. No more mutants. Wanda weaved her magic throughout all of existence, created cracks across reality which spread throughout the Omniverse, and threatened to annihilate all of creation, the entirety of Marvel's infinite cosmology. Everything that ever was. Shit got dark, and while Wanda has worked to keep her powers in check since then, that threat is always there. But honestly, that sounds more like a problem for anyone who's stupid enough to get in her way. Both a blessing and a curse, a help and a hex. Such is the true power of the Scarlet Witch. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by the Northmen. Uh, remind me why you need to be holding a god-slaying axe to watch a movie trailer. Weapons of cosmic destruction center me, Wiz. And this movie's gonna be so friggin' awesome, I needed something to match the occasion. From visionary director Robert Eggers comes The Northman, an action-packed epic with a legendary cast of stars at the peak of their craft, including Alexander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman, Anya Taylor-Joy, Willem Dafoe, Ethan Hawke, and Bjork. Willem Dafoe and Bjork speaking threatening prophecies in my dreams happens like every Tuesday night for me, so this is definitely my kind of flick. It's an action-packed epic that follows a young Viking prince on a quest to avenge his father. Like a Viking version of Hamlet, but this prince is very much in the not-to-be camp when it comes to the poor souls that decide to cross him. See, Wiz, it really is Shakespearean. Man, that was so cool. You can see the care and research in every frame. It might be the most authentic Viking film of all time. The action, the adventure, that slick cinematography. I gotta see this on the big screen right now! Go see The Northman exclusively in theaters April 22nd. Yeah, that'll grow back, right? Come one, come all to see the magnificent Zatanna Zatara. For never was there a greater professor of prestidigital performance. AKA magic! Except Zatanna spells aren't just smoke and mirrors, they're the real deal, so you're really getting your money's worth. She learned everything she knew from her father, Giovanni Zatara, who put his powers to good use as one of DC's very first superheroes. No joke, he's the guy who taught Batman everything he knows about escape artistry. He debuted the same issue as Superman, and the young Zatanna was more than happy to serve as his assistant, learning everything he knew about the cutthroat world of entertainment. Oh, and, and Cape shit too, but the former is way worse. She inherited her father's incredible mystical abilities as well. Essentially, anything Zatanna thinks of, she can make real. And she focuses this absurdly powerful ability by speaking her desired effect backwards. Her father based this technique on the diaries of Leonardo da Vinci, who some theorize wrote backwards in order to hide his ideas from the repressive medieval Catholic Church. Or because he was... Left-handed! Yeah, that's another theory. If you hate fun. And Zatanna's apparently big-brained enough that she has no problem speaking backwards at the drop of a hat. Like when this one dude kept reversing time in the middle of her sentences, she started speaking in palindromes so that she'd still be speaking backwards no matter what. I mean, you know what they say, Wiz. 
Go hang a salami. I'm a lasagna hug. With her magic, Zatanna has bent the laws of reality to her whims. She's transmuted matter on an atomic level, teleported across dimensions, commanded the elements, turned invisible, removed powers, cast illusions, read and controlled minds, traveled through and stopped time, and can even wipe people from existence with a single word. It might not seem obvious from that hokey magic castle getup, but Zatanna is one of the most powerful sorcerers in DC. Like the time she battled the Time Tailor Zor, an old enemy of the Spectre. You know, the Angel of God's Divine Wrath! In order to defeat an opponent of such unimaginable power, Zatanna focused her magical might into shattering the boundaries of reality. She reached out beyond the very comic panels themselves and pulled Zor's entire magical universe down around him. She literally handled all of reality like it was a sheet of paper and crumpled it in her hands. That might seem completely incomprehensibly impossible to us, but it's all a matter of belief. Literally, as long as Zatanna believes she can do something with her magic, she'll do it. As she puts it, her magic is essentially asserting one reality, then replacing it with another. This is similar to other magical characters like Dr. Fate and Green Lantern, whose powers have been stated to work the exact same way. But it's not like any rando can do magic by wishing on a star. Zatanna is genetically predisposed to this kind of magical reality warping. Her mom was in actuality a homo magi, a subrace of humans that are naturally adept at magic. So it's no wonder that Zatanna became an invaluable member of both the Justice League of America and Justice League Dark. The, the Shadow the Hedgehog version, basically. Zatanna harnessed an entire year's worth of sunlight into a single energy blast, created ruptures across all of space and time throughout the DC multiverse, and has even claimed she's as powerful as Superman himself, pre-Crisis Superman, in case you were wondering. Her only limit is her imagination and will. In fact, her backward speaking is mostly a stagecraft tradition meant to boost her concentration. In a pinch, she can cast a spell with a single thud, and I doubt anyone's winning a quick draw with her. She's matched superheroes like Martian Manhunter, who scanned every mind on Earth in a blank instant. Or how about Dr. Fate, whose magic traveled across the universe at the completely immeasurable velocity of God. Zatanna has fended off countless reality-shattering threats like the Eldritch Upside Down Man, Primordial Darkness that is Evil Incarnate, and the Void Beyond Creation, Pralaya. This Shadow Goop Lady ate all of DC Comics, all of creation, everything! Gods, demons, rabbits, and spandex, everything! And Zatanna's magic was strong enough to hold her back! And then, after secretly implanting Swamp Thing inside Pralaya, she weaved a spell within him to literally regrow all of reality back in seconds. Zatanna tricked a being older than God and then blew her ass up from the inside with a whole new omniverse! Abraka goddamn Dabra! Such is the almighty power of Zatanna's will. Should it falter though, or should her focus be disrupted, it could all come crashing down like a house of cards. Belief is a fragile thing after all, and her powers were weakened for a time after she lost belief in herself. And she's definitely got one big weak point. She's a huge daddy's girl. Despite her amazing career, she has struggled within herself to live up to her father's legacy especially after his heroic death. And this MFR has died a lot of times, so Z's therapy can't be cheap, especially after dating John Constantine. Oh, I can just smell the lager and self-loathing from here. No, oh, oh wait, that's me. Questionable romance aside, Zatanna is a consummate professional raised on one singular principle. The show must go on, and she'll always finish strong with a standing ovation. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships are hard and confusing. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well, but how often do we do the same for ourselves? This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. Whether you're hitting the gym, making time for your haircut, or even trying therapy, you are your greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. As this show is sponsored by BetterHelp, Death Battle viewers can get 10 
10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Death Battle. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Death Battle. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle with magic! Oh, thank you, thank you. And for my first trick... Stop talking! If I don't care. Uh... Ta-da! You, what sort of two-bit sorceress do you think you are? Two-bit? Uh, perhaps, Miss <laughs> Perhaps I was being generous. All part of the show, folks. <laughs> Am I walking? I'd say this calls for an adventure! <laughs> Do you know the huh? difference between you and I? Well, I think the difference is... Presentation! And I know a trick when I see one. Forever. Now make like a magician and disappear! Analyzing this matchup was like walking on a tightrope. It could fall either way at any point. Because at the end of the day, both these ladies could do basically anything with their magic. All they had to do was think and shit would happen. They were totally even. At her peak, Wanda was able to threaten the stability of all creation. And at Zatanna's best, she was able to hold back Prolia, who could do the exact same thing. And despite some differences, the omniversal cosmologies of Marvel and DC Comics are roughly equivalent in size and scope. All that was left for us to look at was their weaknesses. While both were as powerful as one another, Wanda needed to tap into the life force to reach that pinnacle, and doing so threatened her sanity. Let's take a closer look at the events surrounding House of M, where Wanda's powers were at their maximum. Despite admitting that she was way stronger, Doctor Strange managed to get the best of Wanda with a cool head and a spell that briefly knocked her out cold. His wits against her mental instability were enough to turn the tide. 
To be clear, this instability definitely wouldn't affect her power. She was still strong enough to create a completely new alternate reality and then erase it just as easily. What it would do is leave her open. Also, take her No More Mutant spell. As insanely powerful as it was to affect the whole of Marvel's creation, it wasn't entirely successful. There was still a tiny portion of Earth's mutant population left unaffected, likely due to interference from Strange and Emma Frost. Against Satana, who was just as strong and not losing her mind, she wouldn't be able to afford that kind of lapse, even for an instant. On the other hand, Zatanna has managed to maintain her willpower fighting foes just as strong as the Scarlet Witch, so she didn't have the same kind of exploitable weakness. And remember, she doesn't actually need to say her spells backwards. It helps with her concentration, but all her spells come from her mental impulses, just like Wanda. She's consistently pulled off non-verbal spells in the past, even against beings as strong as Pralaya. In the end, Z definitely had enough experience fighting smart and keeping on her toes to hang with Wanda long enough to get in a finishing blow. While there were definitely versions of this battle that could have ended with Wanda victorious, Zatanna's cooler head and effortless magic allowed her to prevail. I guess you could say Wanda never saw it coming, and Zatanna maxim off her. The winner is Zatanna. Death Battle is back, and we've launched a brand new membership program for our YouTube channel. By directly supporting our team, you'll get unique emotes, badges, and additional content, and a bunch more. Click the join button to see more info, and thanks so much for watching.